will now announce time to intercept. 25 seconds, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, intercept. On June 26, 1794, two months after the French formed the world's first airborne military service, the first military aircraft went into battle. The balloon flew above the Battle of Fleurs for 10 hours. Its pilot and observer passed information on the Austrians' troop movements, and the French won a resounding victory. The defeated Austrians considered the balloon proof that the French were in league with the devil. It wasn't long before balloons became standard equipment on battlefields. Only seven days after the outbreak of the Civil War, Confederate troops accused a passing balloonist of being a Yankee spy. Though the Germans at the outset of World War I used a Zeppelin to bomb central London, Heavier than aircraft began to dominate the war for the skies. Battle of Biplane versus Blimp, the biplane inevitably won. It wasn't long before the pilots and their spotters, flying slow and low over enemy positions, started to drop bombs. The bombs were small, little more than hand grenades at first. They were inaccurate and ineffective. But for the troops on the ground, the bombs meant that the aircraft passing overhead could no longer be ignored. The era of air-to-air -air combat is born.
German mass-produced aircraft stunned the world. The so-called Fokker Scourge gave the Kaiser almost instant air superiority. The Allies countered Germany's superior numbers with technological innovation. Far from the smart bombs and heat-seeking missiles of the future, the Allies relied on a thin sheath of steel applied to propeller blades. The steel, which deflected bullets fired through the turning aircraft propeller, meant that the pilot no longer had to steer the plane one way while shooting another. The Germans countered with an invention of their own, a device that actually synchronized the aircraft's machine gun with the turning propeller. The war for air superiority, it seemed, was being fought as much in the factories as it was in the sky. When the war ended, armies around the world started to phase out aviation. Those in the corridors of power believed that, romantic as the dogfights of World War I may have been, aircraft served little military purpose. Seeking to prove otherwise was a small group of American flyers. Working separately, they laid the groundwork for the advanced air war of the modern era. In 1921, Brigadier General Billy Mitchell proved that aircraft could be effective in naval engagements. Mitchell and a hastily assembled group of volunteers used phosphorus bombs and armor-smashing concussion weapons to sink two obsolete battleships off Langley, Virginia. Soon after, flying a modified Fokker C-2A called Question Mark, an Army Air Force crew executed the first air-to-air -air refueling. The Question Mark stayed airborne for 150 hours, traveled almost 2,500 miles, and proved that the theoretical range of fighting aircraft was infinity. Finally, to prove that even the weather was no hindrance to effective air operations, then-Lieutenant Jimmy Doolittle rigged crude instruments and an even cruder canopy to his plane. He took off and landed blind. Taken separately, none of the three events was much more impressive than the wing-walking so popular with the era's barnstormers. Taken together, however, the three points proven became the foundation of modern air war. Warfare grew more complicated. Virtually all military crafts began to specialize. It was no longer enough to, in effect, toss a bomb out of an aircraft. Flying was no longer a seat-of-the-pants endeavor. As the needs of the mission sprawled, the previously defined roles in combat splintered. Different types of bombs evolved to attack different kinds of targets. Every advance spurred a countering advance. The Norden bombsite of World War II allowed accurate targeting from high altitude.
It wasn't long before higher altitude anti-aircraft artillery came online, negating the advantage provided by the Norden. Late in the war, the Allies deployed the first air-to-ground missiles, unguided, rocket-powered explosive devices fired in clusters. The rockets were more easily aimed than conventional weapons. The pilot no longer needed to calculate for the pull of gravity. The rockets were little more than a hint of things to come. On the other side of the world, the Germans developed what was in effect a cruise missile. V-1 buzz bombs carrying a one-ton warhead first appeared in 1944. They were vulnerable to attack by conventional aircraft and anti-aircraft artillery, and their guidance system was imprecise. They killed thousands in London and later Antwerp. In the end, the V-1's military effect was no greater than hand grenades tossed out of biplanes. The first true guided weapon was the kamikaze of World War II. The ritually purified pilots, convinced that they were dying to preserve Japanese culture, took an awesome toll late in the war. They died for the emperor, proving in the process the devastating effect of guided weapons. The weapons research that began during the war continued after. While much of the stunning technological development was going on around the primary air mission, there was also development going on within the primary mission. High tech was not confined to air to air. The iron bombs that had fallen blindly where the wind might take them grew aerodynamic fins. They stopped falling and flew. Weapons research and development continued. So that the fighters might better protect both the bombers and the troops on the ground, the Air Force and Navy developed missiles that could actively seek an enemy to destroy. The first was the Sidewinder, a Navy system that actually honed in on the heat signatures of aircraft. The first 12 tests of Sidewinder failed. The 13th, in 1954, changed the nature of combat. Now, a weapon could follow the unpredictable movement of its target. The Sidewinder was so successful that its variants are still in use today. All use basically the same fire control mechanism.
Walleye, the first TV guided bomb, came online late in the Vietnam War. The Walleye allowed a pilot to drop a bomb and then guide it into the target. The accuracy of the weapon changed the mission. No longer was it necessary to fly dozens or even hundreds of planes over a target to get the one effective hit. With the development of smart weapons, a single plane carrying a single weapon could guarantee a successful hit, if the single aircraft could get through. Also specializing was the role of pilots. The P designation, as in P-51, P-38, fragmented into the F and A designations, fighters and attackers. Fast planes developed and designed for single roles. Fighters fought air to air, protecting bombers and troops. Attackers went air to ground. The weapons they deliver are specialists as well. Shrike and harm missiles designed to knock out radar. Penetrating bombs that pierce the thickest fortifications. Cluster bombs to destroy tanks and armor. Heat seeking missiles, radar guided missiles, munitions that home in and destroy a target long after the plane that fired it has headed home.
Nowhere is it more important to find the target than in the air-to-air -air role. Nothing has helped the pilot more than the drones, remotely flown aircraft converted to expendable targets. Fox, Fox. B-04, tally ho engaged. Fox, Fox, Fox. B-04 is arm safe. Knock it off. Brakes off. Yeah. Abort, abort. Abort, 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 abort. Cycle. Fox, Fox, Fox. Four, Kelly Hole engaged. Copy. Fox, Fox, Fox. Faces one, two, back it up. Fox, Fox. Faces one, back it up. The stealth fighter has proven itself as a virtually invisible delivery system. By the time the first bombs of Desert Storm landed on Baghdad, the planes that had dropped them were gone, out of range, back across the border in safe immunity. The AAA gunners of Baghdad were shooting at an empty sky.
Pilots have become specialists. Some point lasers to guide weapons. Others fly electronic warfare craft to jam radar. There are pilots flying cap, protecting the bomb haulers from air-to-air -air attack. There are flak suppressors, whose job it is to watch the ground. The dance is choreographed by airborne radar controllers. The players are maintained in flight by tankers hauling hundreds of thousands of pounds of fuel. Each is less without the others. Each has a checklist pages long, marching them step by step through their mission.
No longer are pilots seat of the pants stick handlers. They are information processors, computers every bit as crucial to the guiding of their weapon load as the kamikazes were. They fly their planes in arcs across the sky, decided not by instinct, but by computer. They work not alone as kings of the sky, but in teams consisting of as many as two dozen aircraft to deliver one or two weapons. To those who can't imagine what the future will bring, remember this. The military is leading the research effort into artificial intelligence. AI, as it is called, will create a new generation of weapons that will identify their own targets, decide how best to destroy them, and carry out their mission. It is not inconceivable in the next 20 years to imagine an airborne battlefield devoid of live participants. Already dogfights take place over the horizon with neither combatant aware of the presence of the other except as a blip on a radar scope. Good. Yes. Good. 
anything that I know is on the group. Impact. Stand there, you got your head in. Coming right. Stand on it. Continue. Okay, I have a flare blow us. I got some fires on the ground below us. Looks like a uh, little bit of AAA left at uh, 10 o'clock snow factory. You got okay, 15 the right seconds. Side. Check the right side 15 of my head. seconds, I am. 12 seconds, end game now, 10 seconds. Keep her steady, keep her steady. Okay, continue, no threats right Five now. Seconds. No threats right now. Foot 65, tuck tuck. Give contact with uh, I got it. Okay. Secondary is locked. Stay narrow for some DDA. I got it. Right. 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 Right.